Good morning and good morning to Hurricane Helene, which is continuing to intensify and organize as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico and eventually towards the state of Florida, where it is expected to make landfall this evening as a major hurricane. We are expecting major impacts to Florida, including life-threatening and perhaps even historic storm surge, flooding rainfall, hurricane force winds, and the potential for maybe even a tornado outbreak during the daytime and nighttime hours today. This is a closer view of Hurricane Helene. Notice how the convection continues to wrap around where the eye is and I think as we go over the next several hours we are going to continue to see this organized further and it's eventually going to intensify more as it moves towards the big bend of Florida. National Hurricane Center's forecast still on track for this to be a hurricane as it makes landfall in the big bend of Florida later today. That is going to make landfall somewhere between approximately Panama City Beach but just a little east of that or back over closer to just south of Tallahassee so near Perry, Florida. It is expected to still make landfall somewhere around category three strength maybe even a low-end Cat 4 if it's able to organize fast enough. Hurricane warnings are in effect across south and southwestern Georgia and much of upstate Florida. And then also we have tropical storm warnings that go all the way up into South Carolina and North Carolina and nearly the entire state of Florida is under a tropical storm warning. So I do want to mention that National Hurricane Center forecast was just before the 5 a.m. advisory because I'm recording this just before the 5 a.m. advisory. So just letting you know, go to the National Hurricane Center website for the latest forecast, but it is still likely to be a major hurricane upon landfall today. Here's what we're looking at for for the rest of this morning. This is going to continue to intensify as it moves into the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. We still do think that this will be a Category 3 upon landfall in the Big Bend of Florida, somewhere just off to the east of Panama City and also back between there and Cedar Key. The worst of the wind is going to be near Tallahassee and into southwestern Georgia, where wind gusts could be as high as 140 to 150 miles per hour this evening, as long as this does continue to intensify as it approaches the state of Florida. And then as this eventually moves inland, we are going to see tropical storms storm force wind gusts and even at sometimes hurricane force wind gusts all the way throughout much of the state of Georgia and even up into parts of North Carolina and South Carolina and we're going to show you more on those impacts here in just a second. Now let's go through the threats with Hurricane Helene and we're going to begin with the future radar just to kind of give you an idea of what's going to be happening today. By lunchtime the outer bands will start to reach the west side of Florida where a few tornadoes will be a possibility. We'll also be watching for that threat back up in southeast Georgia and southern South Carolina. Eventually by the time it makes landfall outer bands will continue to penetrate a tornado risk across the state of Florida. Now, the eye moves inland as we get closer to about lunch, or sorry, by the time we get closer to midnight, and then after midnight this continues to move to the north. Heavy rain will be falling in Georgia and South Carolina. That is where we can expect the potential for an elevated flooding threat. And then as we get closer to Friday morning, this continues to move more inland. More tornadic activity will be possible in South Carolina and North Carolina. And then eventually as we go later into Friday morning, we are pretty much done with the threat, at least in the southeast United States. One of the big threats out of this will be the hurricane force wind potential, the tropical storm force wind gusts as well across the state of Florida. This is what it looks like as we go into the early afternoon hours today. We'll be talking about some tropical storm force winds and even at times hurricane force wind gusts near Sarasota, Tampa, and as well as Cape Coral. As we go later into the afternoon, those winds continue to increase. This particular model has a more easterly landfall, so if that does happen, the winds will be more elevated in areas like Gainesville, Jacksonville, and Daytona Beach. Uh, if that doesn't happen, they'll be a little bit lower than what's currently shown on the map, but overall, we're still expecting some significant wind gusts upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour. That will bring some isolated power outages. Wind gusts, wherever this makes landfall, will be upwards of 100 to 120 miles per hour at really the minimum. So again, be prepared for that if you are near the coastline. And as we go later into the evening and into the overnight hours, the winds will start to die down for most of Florida, and then by Friday morning, we'll still have some gusty winds, but things will be definitely quieter, I think, in nature. Back over in Georgia and South Carolina, those winds will be picking up mainly late Thursday night into early Friday morning. Wind gusts expected to be pretty high across Georgia. We could have some areas near 80 to 90 miles per hour. And then eventually as we go into Friday morning, those wind gusts will continue to move into upstate South Carolina, eventually dying out as we go into Friday afternoon. The good news is, is that this is just a very fast moving hurricane. Now back over in the Ohio Valley, we're also going to see some wind gusts in an elongated area from Ohio back even into Arkansas. Worst of the wind Friday afternoon will be in Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. So there could be some isolated power outages there. Once we go into Saturday morning, though, this thing really starts to die out, and we're pretty much done with any sort of tropical storm force wind gusts. And another big concern we have with Hurricane Helene will be the potential for significant flooding. There are two different areas that we're looking at for the greatest threat, one of which will be back down near Tallahassee. That's basically near Apalachicola. And then the other one back over in parts of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, essentially in the higher elevations. And those areas up here could actually see a widespread 10 to 15 inches of rain, and there could be some isolated 
isolated spots that get near 20 inches of rain. So you need to be making sure that you're taking this very seriously if you're back over in those higher elevations. Flip side of things, we are still talking about more than likely at least somewhere around 8 to 12 inches near Tallahassee. few isolated spots could be higher than that. For the remainder of Florida, we are still looking at somewhere between a half an inch to four inches of rain. It's going to vary on how many hour bands you get of rain and also exactly if they stationary, if they become a bit more stationary or if they're moving very quickly. And for reference, we do have a high risk for excessive rainfall back over in that part of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, just off to the north and east of Atlanta and another high risk near Tallahassee. There's also a moderate risk that does extend back up into parts of Virginia and also into parts of eastern Alabama and almost all of Georgia. So make sure if you're anywhere in any of these areas that you are staying vigilant and make sure you turn around, don't drown on the roadways. One of the biggest impacts that we are going to be seeing out of Hurricane Helene is going to be the storm surge and especially back over in the Big Bend where there is a potential for some historic storm surge. Perhaps even up to 20 feet of storm surge will be possible. And then anywhere else, we are still talking about significant storm surge. Even back down in Charlotte Harbor, we could see three to five feet of storm surge. Tampa Bay near five to eight feet of storm surge. It is going to be a very significant area that we're talking about for storm surge today. So if you're near the coastline, again, take evacuation order seriously. This is your last time to evacuate if you're under, under any of those evacuation orders. Um, again, also even on the east coast of Florida, back up into South Carolina, we we're even expecting one to three feet of storm surge there. It's not super life-threatening most of the time unless you're near the beach, but um, obviously still notable if you're up and down that coastline. Again, the tornado risk for today is elevated. We actually have a 10% tornado risk, which has expanded a little bit since yesterday. It does include northeastern Florida, eastern Georgia, and southern South Carolina, where a few tornadoes are likely. And then we also have our 5% tornado risk, which a few tornadoes will be possible here. And then a couple tornadoes possible in the green shaded area for Georgia, even parts of North Carolina, and back into southern Florida. So make sure you have a tornado action plan in place for today. Once we go into Flying Fences Friday, we have a slight risk of severe weather back over in North Carolina and South Carolina. Another shot for a few tornadoes will exist on Friday. So if you are anywhere in North Carolina or South Carolina, also have a tornado action plan in place for Friday. I've already showed you the timing for tornadic activity in Florida. Let's jump up into the Carolinas. This is what it looks like as we go into Friday morning. Some storms coming offshore, moving inland. Those are the ones that are going to be the most capable of tornadoes in the morning hours. Just after lunchtime, that tornado threat will continue throughout eastern North Carolina. And then by the late afternoon, I think this threat is really starting to wind down. And then by the evening, we are definitely, I think, done with most of the tornadic activity in the Carolinas. All right, we're going to have a live stream later today for landfall coverage. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell icon as well so you're notified when we go live. It is going to be a very busy day, I think. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening, so we're going to be live at some point today. I'm not sure what time. We do have a stream scheduled, though. Uh, whenever that stream gets scheduled, that it's currently around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but it is subject to change. Again, just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we go live later today. We'll see you then.